Our program includes many languages. Please log on to our program schedule for more details. SupremeMasterTV.com forward slash schedule. Nos programmes comprennent des émissions en plusieurs langues. Pour de plus amples informations, consultez suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule. 我们的节目含多种语言，请参访节目表的网址，查询详情。SupremeMasterTV.com斜线schedule. So maybe we have suffered already. Okay, we have tasted the bitter and the sweet of this uh, illusionary world already. And now it's time we want to go home. We say, I had enough with it. I don't want to play no more. I want to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> okay, then the master come and say, hey, this way, baby. And the master, what? You've been playing all this time? Huh? You play with my toys? Uh, you eat my food? Uh, you breathe my air? And now you say you just go? Go? How? I show you how. Huh? You see, just like that. Please continue watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Aulaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Chinese, Dutch, English, French, German, Hebrew, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Thai, Turkish, and Urdu. Эмэрэнгүү үзэгчдтэйгээ халуун дулаанаар мэндчлий отхон миний би сэтгэл татам Монгол улсын Улаанбаатараас мэндчилж байна. Монгол улс нь төв Азийн цээжинд орших хурдстай хөвжиж буй нүүдэлчин суурин иргэн шил хосолсон улс юм. Эртний түүхийн бичээст Монгол гэдэг нэрийг гурван голын улс хэмээн тайлбарласан байдаг. Энэхүү үсгэл нутгийн зочлонтгой ард түмэн нутаг орн байгаль орчноо өнөө хүртэл хүндлэн дээдэлж онгон дагшнаар нь хадгалж хамгаасаар иржээ. Монгол улс нь Мазалай баавгай тах хулан гэх мэт 1900 амьтдыг жинхэнэ байгаль дээрэс нь харах боломжтой цөөн хэдэн орны нэг юм. Энэ хүү онгон дагшин байгалийн сасан цагаан үйл өтгөн ногоон зүүн хайр дүүрэн хавар өн балгасан намар татагдсан зорж ирэх жуучдын тоо жилээс жил нэмэгцээр байна. Нүүдэлчин соёл уламжлалаас нь үүсэн уянгалаг сайхан уртын дүү хөөми морин хуур үндэсний баяр наадамгүйгээр Монгол улсыг төсөөлхийн аргагүй билээ. Хансаг Монгол улсаа үзэсгэлэнд үзэгчдтэй товчхон танилцуулсандаа та та байна. Ерөөл дамдрлын аялалд бурхан та бүхэнтэй үргэлж хамт алхах болтугай. Ушгаруу жилийн турш төгсгэгэрсэн их өгчийнхээ ариун сургаалуу дараа даян дэлхийг гэрэлтүүлж байна. Төвсгэгэр сэн хөгч төрэр дотоодын бурхан чанараа нэг даруй олж мэдхийг хүсэж нэг нь насандаа өхөж төрхийн хүднээс мөнхөж чөлөөд гэтгийг эрмэлзэх хэм бүхэнд ари явлын бэстгэлийн аргыг уламжлалдаг билээ. Бодта Есүс Христ, Зүнч Мухаммед, Тэрээр Амгалан байг, Гүрүү Нанаа гэх мэт бүхэл гэгэр сэн их багш нар ари явлын аргаар бэстгэл дадуулсаар ирсэн байдаг. Тэрбээр хэрэг бид үргэлж бурхныг санаж бусдын төлөө өөрийгөө умртан үйлчилж 
орчлон ертөнцийн хуулийг дагаж явах аваас хүний хурч болох хамгийн дээд төвшин төрч энд дэлхий дээр их зорилгоо үнэхээр ухаарах болно хэмээн хэлсэн байдаг. Их багш чинхай бол хайр энэрлийн хосгүй амьд үлгэр дуурайлал юм. Тэрээр дөрөвсөд байгалийн гам шиг төртөгсөд орон гэргүй болон тусам чирэгтэй хэм бүхэнд материалыг болон санхүүгийн төсөлцааг хайрынхаа хамт ямагт илгээж байдаг билээ. Төвсгэгэрсэн их багш чинхай өнгөрсөн жилүүдэд бурхны эрхэм хүүхдүүдээ гэх хайр нэг үсэлийнх нь дарвахан багаж байж альва сайн зорилгын төлөө мөн гамшигт нэрвэгдсэн болон ядарсан нэгэнд хүргэсэн бүхий санхүүгийн тусламж тайтгарал дэмжлэгт эрхэм дээд бурханд гүнээ тадрахж байна. 2006 онд тэрээр Дорн дахинд Моблийн инх тайвны шагналд тоосогдох Гүси инх тайвны шагналыг хүрсэн бөгөөд хүмүүнлгийн болон бусдын сайн сайхны төлөөх гайхамшигтай ажил үйлсээрээ өнгөрсөн он жилүүдэд бусад олон шагнал өргөмжлүүдийг хүртэж байсан юм. Үсгэлэн танд амттай маань жинхэнэ дуу хоорлоо тэрээр хүн төрлөгтөн бүхэл амьд оршинлын ариун гэгэн чанарыг ухааран сэрснээр их дэлхийн маань хүн болоод амтд азжиргалтай, эв захиралтай ажил төрөх амар тайван сүрж авахлантай бүрэн веган дэлхий болно гэсэн итгэл найдвараар амар амгалан энэрэнгүү ургамлын хоолыг түгэн дэлгэрүүлж байдаг. Веган чиг хандлагыг дэлгэрүүлэх түүний санаачлах олон төрөл байдгаас дурдвал өөрөөр амьдрах үе тарах утас хайрын өргөө олон улсын сүлжээ веган ресторан Supreme Master телевиз төлөвгүй бидний мэдсэн хэсгээс үл хамааран тэрээр өөр амьсгалын өөрчлөлтийн талаарх телевизийн конференцуудад оролцож нөлөө бүхий засгийн газрын болон хэвэл мэдээллийн байгууллагуудын удирдлагатай ойр ойрхон ярилцдаг. Түүний энэ бүх хүчин чармайлт нь амтан дээлтэй амьдралын хэв маягийг төдийгүй энэхүү энэрэнгүй зам мөрөн гарыг дэлхийг цаг үүрэн өөрчлөлтөөс авраа зогсохгүй улс хүндэснүүдийн дунд тогтвортой инх таймныг хэрхэн авчирч чадахыг олон нийтэд ойлгуулахад асар их нөлөө үзүүлсэн байдаг. Төгс гэгэрсэн их багчинхаа олон жилийн турш дэлхий даяар Америкаас Африк хүртэл Европоос номхон далай хүртэл аялахтай олон нийтэд болон шавь нартаа төрөл бүрийн сүнслэг сэдвүүдээр олон зүүн лег зүншиж ярилцлага өгсөн байдаг. Өнөөдөр бид тэдгээр ухаарал хайрлан лекцүүдийн нэг болох 2008 оны 8 сарын 22-нд Франц улсад англи хэл дээр айлдсан Румигийн шүлэг Барон дэлбүүлсэн Жимсний цэцэрлэг мэт гурван цуврал лекцийн хоёр дугаар хэсгийг багш авийн шүтэлцээгээр толиолох хувьд тохиолоо. Ego is nothing actually it's just made up of a bunch of you know learned knowledge and then you think is you that you know this you know that all the knowledge put together that what you learn from others or societies or books and you think is you you think you know it all and that anything else is not right anything else that you haven't heard of that cannot be true <laughs> something like that that's why it's difficult in a way i'm lucky because my families all became quanin practitioners all by themselves I have not even come to preach anything to them. I know it won't work. <laughs> so they just heard about me from everybody else around them. And then they got curious enough, okay, follow me too. <laughs> I have enough respect from everybody else already and they know it must be okay. So uh, by the time the neighbors come to tell them that her uh, You know, your daughter has been very famous and great and people revere her and follow her in numbers. Then they already have a prepared heart. They already have an inner experience already. So I'm blessed with that. I'm lucky. Uh, even though I have not uh, always the opportunity to live with them again or to see them, but we are always together you know in the heart is very good yes okay so the father continue but what harm will it do to you 
my son, to listen just a little longer. I mean, all these years, okay, fine, he has been telling all this, but he just talked a little longer. What harm will it do to you? Just listen to me. So, so they were calling back and forth, with Noah never relenting his admonishments to his son. But suddenly a wave came that buried Canaan and tore him to pieces. Oh, ow, terrible. It's just a strong wave. Oh, God, even a father cannot save the son. Can you imagine how he felt? And a spiritual father, the all-knowing, the all-compassion, all-loving, and cannot even talk to his son to save his life. And he died right in front of him in such a tragic situation and such a horrible death like that. Can you imagine how Noah had felt at that time? Can you imagine? So you're not surprised to see Canaan in this situation, so dead against the father, are you? Not much surprise, huh? Sometimes you experience that in your family, right? Yeah? And I experience this in my surroundings, sometimes with my closest one, uh, close assistant, or the one that I think would respect my words or love me so much. It's not always true. But this is the price he had to pay for being a master. You see, the Maya cannot hurt him. The king uh, of hell cannot bribe him. Satan can never uh, make him waver in his devotion to God because he's in direct contact with God. He knows what it is. He has wisdom. He has opened himself. He become one with God. So Satan can never hurt him in any way. Even to kill him, he would not waver. I mean, Noah. Even if Satan punish him, torture him, kill him, he would never have Noah on his side as an evildoer or as one of his subordinates. Just like Jesus say, even the devil come and offer him the three words. He say, get behind me. Yes? And when Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree and he became enlightened, and the Maya, the king of Maya, you know, also came there uh, disguised as the a beautiful woman and you know, dancing around him, you know, half naked, whatever, you know, like stripped, yeah, <laughs> uh, lap dance, whatever, on him, and he doesn't move. He say, I know who you are. And just buck off. <laughs> I don't know how he say that in Sanskrit, but I would say buck off. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. So that is the thing. The king of Maya, the king of illusion knows that no matter what he does to the master, he will not waver, you know? Even give him the kingdom or anything at all. Maybe he take it, but he tell the Maya still bug off. <laughs> Actually, whatever the master had in possession, it was because of his or her own merit, you know? In a former life, maybe they're charitable and give it a lot to people. So in this lifetime, they may become wealthy, yeah, healthy, and have a lot of abundance of food, money, everything. But that is not from the king of illusion, you know? <laughs> it's not like the Maya come and say, bow to me and you have the kingdom. You can rule the world and all that. And of course the master never bow, never care. Yeah. Even if he became poor or stripped of all of his possession and became even a beggar on the street, he would never waver his faith in God. That's why Buddha doesn't even come back to be king. He continued to be just a mendicant, yeah? A monk who has nothing. Then he has everything, too. Mm -hmm. If he's a king, only his subjects pay respect to him, or not. <laughs> But he's a Buddha, yeah, a master. Uh, all the nations pay respect to him, well, except his cousin, of course. <laughs> he wake wars against him. He make his own separate uh, 
faith against the Buddha and even try to assassinate him. For example, like that. So the king of Maya knew that nothing can hurt the master at all except kill his son, which is he himself. He reincarnated into the family of Noah, become a son, so that he's beloved, yeah? And his father loved him and cared for him because he's his son. And then he died in such a tragic way just to hurt him. The same with many people. When they're frustrated with family members or something goes wrong, they go kill themselves. In some way, they want to punish the living, not just punish themselves. They want to die so that the people behind them have to grieve and blame themselves and be in sorrow forever. You know, like, how dare you offend me? How dare you did that and this to me? How dare you scold me so much? Now I die, you'll be sorry forever. You will blame yourself forever. You'll feel guilty forever. Okay. Similar way, the Maya, apart from hurting the Master already, but still the Master will never give up God to be with him anyway. He tried the best, like hurting the one that he loves, hurting the one that she trusts, something like that, or turn the person that he or she trusts against the Master. That hurt the most, you see? Cannot do anything to the master, just use something else around it to hurt him. This is the thing with Maya, with the negative power. But that is also the price that any master has to pay. Uh, not the same case, but similar situation, or in a different way, always the master has to pay some price. You see, either with his life, reputation, or the feeling of that, anything at all, anything at all. To be a master, you have to pay, and pay a lot, no matter what you are, no matter how high position you are in heaven, no matter how high the spiritual attainment you have reached, you have to pay in this world for saving people, because you are interfering with the law of karma. Even though you awaken people, and they save themselves also. But still, you come and tell them how. <laughs> you come, come and tell people, hey, look, you listen to me, and you'll be free forever from the Maya, from hell, from suffering. You'll be glorious now and in heaven. And the people saw that. Ah, it's true what he said, follow him. And of course, the Maya lost. You see, the more people follow the master, the more Maya lost. So if the master succeed in convincing people to free themselves from the trap of Maya, you think the Maya is a few happy? Oh, bravo, master, take all of my subjects. Take all of my souls to heaven. Leave me here all alone, ruling myself. <laughs> Would he feel like that? No, of course not. Miserable. Mm. Lost one more soul now. What am I to do? See what I mean? Yeah. So that's why he fights this battle bitterly, so he can retain the control of all the souls under his grip. He likes that. It's just the work of the universe, you know? There is positive and there is negative. They're fighting together. Maybe that's how the world becomes colorful. Yes, but uh, if we don't know it, we suffer so much, okay? Yes, so maybe we have suffered already. Okay, we have tasted the bitter and the sweet of this uh, illusionary world already. And now it's time we want to go home. We say, I had enough with it. I don't want to play no more. I want to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> okay, then the master comes and says, hey, this way, baby. And the master what? You've been playing all this time, huh? You play with my toys, huh? you eat my food, uh, you breathe my air, and now you say you just go? Go? How? I show you how. Huh? You see, it's just like that. Similar, you watch some movies, or it may be in real life also, you know, like if somebody, by some circumstances, joining some gangs, yeah? And became a gangster. 
maybe he, his heart wants it to be a gangster, or maybe just situation force him into it and he's trapped and he cannot get out. And the trapped one really doesn't like what he's doing, being a gangster, robbing and killing people or doing things that is against his conscience. And he normally never would have done that if situation uh, had not trapped him into it. You see, sometimes once you innocently talk to some gangster and then uh, you just buy something from him or take some favor from him, just buy sweet talk, and then later you're trapped into it. You're tricked into becoming a gangster yourself. And then, uh, or maybe they use your parents, you know, kidnap your people and use it against you, and then you have to follow them and do what they say or else, something like that. Or they will expose you to the police, and then now it's kind of too late and you're trapped in there. And now you want to get out. It won't be easy. You know that, right? Uh, even all the films show that, you know, if you want to get out of the gang, sometimes you get killed. They eliminate you because you're no longer with them. Yes? You so called betray them. And also, they don't want you to go out in case you tell the police about the secret that you know about them, thing like that. So you get eliminated. Not just in a gangster system, but sometimes even in the old time, in some of the uncivilized society, uh, if you get out of a government secret system, secret service, they also try to kill you, to keep you quiet, because you know too much. And maybe the things you know is not good to let other people know. Like the thing you know are not morally acceptable. It's not even lawful in that country. And then the secret uh, service itself will eliminate you. It's the same. I use also some film, you know, like that. It can be true also in some society, even in some powerful society. It happens. So suddenly you have, oh, so and so, you know. <laughs> uh, chief of uh, secret service of so-and-so country suddenly just die, murder, shot on the street or in his hometown, even though he ran away to another country already. Yeah, hide away, still cannot hide away. So similar to the souls of humanity, once we're trapped in here, it's difficult for us to get out. And if we want to get out, the person who show you the way, also risk his or her life. It's similar, similar. And you also risk also. But because this, the person who show you the way have the way to protect you, yes. So you are safe. But the person who show the way, they are after him. You are just one of their members. But the person who show the way will show many more members if he's alive or she's alive. So the gangs. You know, we'll be after the person who show the way to get out, who protect the ex gangs member and set him free. So that's what I said about the price that uh, any master has to pay in one way or another. Yeah. You read the history and you know all the master had never had it easy, right? We have all the, the history and evidence already. We don't want to talk about that. If you want to know about them, you can read. Yeah? Okay? You can read in Indian books, yeah, or history. Or well, we don't have to read too far. Look at Jesus, huh? In your society, everybody knows what he has to pay for, for his teaching, yeah? Uh, uh, what he has to pay for showing people the truth. What he had to pay for to liberate the souls. Now, so of course, after his son has been buried by the wave and even tore him into pieces. Can you imagine what Noah had felt? Be, even being an enlightened master, it is his own son, you see? His blood and bones die tragically, horribly in front of his eyes like that. And it's right there that he could even help him. It's not like far away. It's right in front of him. And he has the means to help him, to save his life, but he can't. You imagine that? Just one second, his son is torn into pieces, gone. So, 
What would you say to God if you're in that situation? You complain, no? You lament, no? You cry. You might even yell, scream, shout it to heaven. Why would this happen to me? Why does this happen to my son? So let's see what Noah said to God. That was what be my situation, of course, but Noah may be different. He's a tough guy. Maybe he, he react differently. Let's see how he said. Ah, said Noah, my Lord and my King, you have taken this one from me. Yet many times you promised that my family would be saved. So God answered, Canaan was not one of yours. Can't you see that he is blue and you are white? What does God mean by that? Huh? What does he mean by that? Does he mean that uh, Canaan was uh, born out of wedlock or something? <laughs> huh? That his color, his uh, skin is blue? At that time, blue means also black, like dark color. And white mean like you, European, okay? Or oh, like me. Mm. <laughs> I'm joking. Mm. Yellow, no? Do I look yellow to you? Huh? Little, right? <laughs> okay. I don't look any, huh? Sometimes I look black, sometimes I look like Indian, sometimes I look like Asian. Depends on who sits next to me. Right now I look like him. Mm. <laughs> Truly, truly, sometimes I see the photographer make an image of me, uh, of himself, you know, for my photograph. You don't know it because you don't know who took some of my photo, but I know very well. If so-and-so took my photo, I look just like him, like his sister. You know, the face, you know, really would be longer or fatter or skinnier, it depends. Yeah. Except when I direct him how to take my photo, yeah, and where, then it's maybe different. But if he takes it spontaneously by himself, then I look like that guy very much, or that girl, whoever, yeah, most often like that. Or whoever sits next to me, I look just like them. Have you seen some of the photo when I take it with somebody else? I look like their relatives, or even mother or sister, huh? Yeah. Or even some look like the men also, you know, who sit next to me sometimes, very near together with the picture. I look like them. But can you imagine, sometimes two or three people sit next to me and I look all like three of them. <laughs> and three of them are not the same family, not even in the same town. <laughs> oh, it's funny, I saw some of that and I can only laugh, you know. Mm. So here, God told Noah that Canaan is not his family members, because Canaan is blue and Noah is white. Can you tell me what he means by that? Anybody? Are the wise Buddhas? He's mentioned in the um, Bible, in Old Testament, that Noah, when he was born into his family, he was an exceptional baby. He had blue eyes and white skin that no one in his family had. Yes. So that's why he was born like this, directly from God. Blessed mm. by God, it yeah. seems. But when he bare his children, his children took from his ancestors, <laughs> perhaps. Oh, so he think uh, Canaan took is from his ancestors? Some of his, yeah. Mm. I have seen some of the terrible dictators, I mean, butcher of the history, and they look so handsome. But when I look closer, oh, I know who that is very, very well. Behind the handsome face, I see who that person is incarnate, just from photo alone. Because when I read history and all that, you know, or see documentary film or look, read in books and they show photos of so and so, you know, who has caused untold misery, a miserable death to people, yeah? I mean, lots and lots of death to people and who kills without blinking an eye. And I thought, how can such a handsome looking person, you know? 
can be like that. And I looked closer. Oh, my goodness. I saw all the trace, you know? I saw the, the face behind that face. I know he's not from our world, you know? I know he's not uh, from the positive power. He's a king of the negative. He's uh, Lucifer incarnate. I can see that even. Because I could not believe, you know, that any person can be so wicked and so bad, you know? I mean, inside out. And I thought, okay, maybe in the war or something, revolution, sometimes people would die by fighting each other, you know? But it cannot be from the heart of a person who deliberately, you know, orders so many torturous deaths. And so I look at the picture, you know, one of those, I'm not telling you whom, eh? And it look at the first glance, you know, all handsome, you know, very uh, good-looking men. So I shook my head at it. It's not, cannot be true. Because we all imagine, you know, if an evil person must look very ugly or, you know, at least dark-looking <laughs> or something, or have some horn, <laughs> no, not necessary, but, oh, that guy was so like cheese face, you know? And I look further, I say, oh, jeez. I see the real face. Not like it appear on the, the photo, but you can see it. You know what I mean? You can see it. That, that is not the, the, the handsome face, it's just the face. But that face is resemble what face? You know, I mean, I know that very well. Resemble that devil, truly like that. Without horn, without fang. I can see it very well. Oh, no, 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 okay. Dark skin, but his son was darker. Dark skin, of course, yes. Okay, now. There is another episode, may I ask? Tell me, tell me that showed how cold-hearted Kinan was yes. in uh, another instant in the family life. Yes. Uh, a summer, uh, Noah had collected a lot of grapes, and he ate a lot of grapes. Who eat? Noah. Noah ate a lot of grapes, yes. But grapes were fermented. Yes. So he became drunk. Oh. And he was very happy, and he removed his clothes and started to dance. Understand. So Kinan, when he saw his father, he mocked him yeah. and made fun of him yes. and ridiculed him. Yes. But his two other sons, when they saw their father in such a weak state and yes. fragile position, yes. took a piece of cloth and covered him and covered him and comforted him and said, "Never mind, come and sleep it off." Yes. And put him in in his bed. Understand. So this is the sons, the true sons, yes. how they behave yes. uh, when they see their father or mother in a fragile state. Yes. It's very easy to kick someone in a fragile state. Yes, yes. But Kinan did that. Yes. He was very cold-hearted. Yes. Even he is the son. So the other two sons are two sons, and this son is really there just to torture him. The canine. That's so I told you already. He must have been the devil incarnate then. I told you that. Okay. Anyway, so this is a story in the Bible that your sister has just uh, uh, supplied. You see what I mean? Mm. So now you know. Uh, it's not just me speaking. Uh, it's truly he is like that already. You know, before this situation happened. So he's there just to make hell for the master. Yeah. And in the sun and heart and all yeah. that, probably they became fermented, and uh, uh, Noah did not notice that. Yes, so he ate it, and then he became drunk. Yes, it was by accident. And knowing that, the son, of course, should have helped him, yeah. but he didn't. Uh, instead, he, he mocked him, yeah, and ridiculed him and all that kind of thing. Instead of helping him or covering him, because if he remained like that too long, he might die even, you know, being cold and, or maybe falling down and because he's not used to it being drunk. His true sons rebuked this son, saying, this is not the way to treat your own father. Yes, it's, it's correct. He was rebuked. Yes, okay. All right. And even that kind of son, the father, true to being a father, still want to save him so desperately, and still so 
feeling so much pain when he lost him. So this is a true love of the father. All the father loves their children like that. Not to talk about that he's a being a master and being compassionate. He's a true father as well. So in the family matter, he's a true father, a good man. And in the spiritual matter, he's a true awakening saint. But this is the price he has to pay. Living with such a devil as a son and having to feel his heart tormented when his son died in such a horrible way in front of his eyes like that, and he could not do nothing. So, of course, God understand that. Eh? So God said to him, Don't you see? He's not one of yours. He is blue, <laughs> I mean dark color, and you are white. In India, uh, they say blue when it's the kind of dark and black, you know? Like they say Krishna also was born a blue color. But it's not blue, they're just darker, like Indian people. Hmm. Kind of bluish, I guess, <laughs> a tint of blue or something. Yeah. So that's why sometimes we say black and blue, you know? Dark blue, <laughs> it's like black too. Hmm. Сэглэнтэй үзэгчтэй өнөөдөр та бүхэн Румигийн шүлэг борон дэлбүүлсэн жимсний цэцэрлэг мэт гурван цуурлын хоёр дугаар хэсгийг багш авийн шүтэлцээгээр хүлээн авч үзсэнд баяртай байна. Supreme Master телевизтэй хамт байж эерэг хөдөлбөрүүдээ үргэлжлүүлэн үзээрэй. Одоо Арьон Курааны төврүүд 10 дугаар бүлэг хоёр цуурлын нэгдүгээр хэсэг онцлог мэдээний дараа мөргөн сургаалаар гарна. Та бүхний амьдрал үсглэнтэй бүхнээр болон сайхан мөчөөдөр дөөрөн байг. May your lives be full of the most beautiful and blessed moments. For more details and to check our schedule for language availability, please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash bmd and suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule Pour plus d'informations et pour consulter le programme des langues disponibles, visitez suprememastertv.com barre oblique bmd et suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule Ji Chashin Jemu Biao, Yo Na Xie Yu Yen, Ching Tan Fang Isha Wang Ji, Supreme Master TV Dian Kam, Xie Xian, B M D, Iji Supreme Master TV Dian Kam, Xie Xian, Schedule.